Hi everyone, it's Louise with Louise McKay Art, and I'm back today to do something different than I've ever done, believe me. And if I say I'm a little nervous, I am not exaggerating. I've got butterflies flying around my stomach. So what I've got here is a tray, and this is about eight and a half inches wide by about 12 inches long. And I've taped it off a little bit, but not all the way to the bottom because I want to have the paint be able to move. I just don't want to have a splatter. And I'm going to do a bloom in there. And I'm going to go with a palette that I'm familiar with. I've got my Chantilly Lace, my Quinacridone Nicolazzo Gold by Golden, my uh, Prussian Blue by Arteza, my Gold 24 Karat by Decoir, and my Iridescent Bronze by Golden. This time I'm going to go with White Cell Activator first and then the black. And it's important which way you layer your, your cell activator. And I'll show you in a second. So by this video, I've probably already shared this video, but I did two similar blooms on this uh, three by six tile, test tile. This is with white cell activator first, then black. This is the black cell activator first, then the white. Whatever color you lay down first is the color that ends up in the middle primarily. So for this I'm going to do today, I'm going to go with the white cell activator first, then the black. I apologize, that's my heater going because I'm going to be doing resin this afternoon and I have to get this room warmed up a little bit. Right now it's uh, 66 degrees and that's not warm enough to do resining, <laughs> so I'm going to be doing a lot of warming up in here. Plus I have a heat light. Alright folks, let me get you down on my tray. and. Hope for the best here. Okay, I'll be back in a second. All right, everybody, here you go. The moment of truth. I gotta be very careful because I don't wanna touch the edges of this thing. This is a uh, bamboo. I bought this in a three pack off Amazon. Here we go. I'm not sure how much paint to put down. I don't want to put so much down. Well, I need to put enough down so that I can have a place to blow. I don't want to put so much down that I can't get this to dry. Oh, my stomach. I am nervous. So I'm going to skip ahead here a little bit as I'm spreading out the pillow paint, but I want you to notice that the tape I don't have going all the way to the bottom of the tray. I have about a quarter of an inch space. Because after I paint, I don't want to have the tape pull up the paint. So just pointing that out first. Okay, I'm going to count on this thing spreading when I spin it. Because I'm going to be spinning. And i got to keep my hands clean. Here we go. Got to make sure to put enough paint down. And do one bloom in the middle. And I'm going to use my lungs, hopefully, to blow this thing out. <laughs> yep, surprise, you can't hear my heartbeat. It's pounding. Never done anything like this before. So I got this in a three pack off of Amazon. I'm going to make sure I add enough paint. I'm just doing one bloom here and I got to spread this bad boy out. I mixed some of these paints yesterday. My quinacridone, Nicolazzo combo. And I hear my dog. She... Nope, I'm doing this one quietly because I'm going to be resining later and I don't want to have any extra foot traffic in here if I can avoid it. This is the Prussian Blue. 
and part of me feels bad to go over this nice piece of wood. But then, I'm going to make it prettier. I'll make it more interesting. Gold. And the bronze. I think I've got enough paint. The key critical thing is going to be the blowout. And I've had these, these cell activators, this is the regular Australian. I had this thicker, and I have since thinned it down a little bit. I added five drops of Australian Floetrol today to this. So I'm going to primarily blow that way and this way to start. All right. Got to put enough cell activator down. The white. I hope that's enough. Now the black. I'm going to get my lungs on. So I'm going to double time through the blowout because number one, it took a while, and number two, I was blowing like crazy and I'm almost embarrassed to have you guys hear me blowing my lungs out. And I did learn a lesson here. Going on something that's an eight by 12 is too much for my set of lungs to blow out. So lesson learned with that. When you go to this size, it's probably best to pull out the hairdryer and blow it out. And also, while you're watching, um, if you haven't noticed, I'm getting into different types of uh, pours now. I'm trying to do things that are more functional. And pouring on wood is definitely going to lend myself to get in that direction. Maybe some Lazy Susans, I don't know. Starting out with that butterfly a few weeks ago was the start of me putting paint on wood. So I'm thinking functional art versus canvases all the time might be a nice little change and option for anybody that might be buying anything. Plus another thing, especially for those that have been following me for a while since I started in December, is that you've seen me go from one technique to another, back to another technique, and I keep switching around. So this is just another way of getting into other avenues and trying out new techniques on new medium. And you may have noticed here um, that I'm changing my straws out every so often because after you've been using a straw for a while, and I've pointed this out before, it starts to get condensation inside and the drips can fall on the canvas and then it can mess up the painting. So just a word of the wise, change your straws out. Have a few extras so you don't have the condensation dripping into the painting. Let it kind of sit for a second here. So far, so good. I'm expecting that this is going to spread as I spin it. And I'm going to spin it very, very slowly. Okay. I'm not going to add any extra paint right now. I don't want to overdo the paint. I 
So just so you're aware, this is real time here. This is the speed that it's actually spinning at. I think I got the right amount of paint down there. Okay, I already reached the end over there and over there. So I've got the ends reached, which is good. just a little bit more in a couple spots. So here I'm picking up the pace as I try to stretch this out to the sides so there's less white showing. And uh, you'll see me eventually pulling out the palette knife and trying to get a little more uh, embellishment on the ends, ends and sides. And later you'll also see me pull out a little syringe and pull out some paint. I just didn't want to have extra paint laying on the canvas and, and cause it a problem when drying. And one more thing. I noticed that when I was spinning this out, it wanted to go more lengthwise than widthwise, which bothers me some, but from a physics standpoint, it makes sense. So I'm going to try this again in an upcoming video, doing it differently and maybe putting down two blooms and not having it spread so much so that it turns out looking more like a dragonfly than like a bloom in the end. So of this whole experience, that's the one thing that kind of bothers me about this whole piece. But for a first try, I'm not going to complain. Live and learn. It's always live and learn. So yeah, here's the little syringe where I'm trying to pull up some of the extra paint from the corners because it, when it's spun, it's spread up the corners just a little bit. But that uh, little dripper syringe thing doesn't work very well. And I end up pulling out a different type of syringe, which, which works much better in the end. bothering me about this and that the edges are all white and it almost seems like I would prefer to have had the paint roll over itself getting to the ends and corners than having extra paint to start with and then have that be almost like a border on the inside. So something for me to think about in the future.
almost done. Okay, so with the exception of a few spots, which I'll take out, this is where we are, folks. So for a first try, I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> 